Welcome to Just John and April, the relationship podcast, your place for life, love, and laughs. In today's episode, unexplained hearing loss and the word of the day. Hey, babe. Hey. How you doing? Good. Um, you want to continue this series that we've been doing, dealing with personal trauma and tragedy? Yes. Yeah. This has brought up a lot of emotions. It has definitely brought up a lot of uh, old stuff yeah. because it started way back in 2001 right. with our first situation with that car accident. And then we mm-hmm. had the miscarriage and then we talked about my cancer in 2010. Right. And so now we're going to be talking about something that just happened earlier last year. Right. Uh, 2018. Um, Mm -hmm. unexplained hearing loss with our daughter, Julia. It all started when we moved here, I think. Yeah. So we moved here July of 2018 to Maryland. Right. And from Atlanta, from Atlanta. And it was very hard for Julia. It was very hard for me. We talk about that in our loneliness episode. Very Um, first episode. Very first episode. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Oh my. You sure about that? I think so. Loneliness in marriage. Our first podcast that we ever did. Wow. I'm almost positive. Okay. Go back and check it out and see yeah. if I'm right. Yeah. Not so. me, you, <laughs> you, the viewer. Yeah, so go back and watch that if you want to know, you know, what I'm referring to. But yeah. Maybe you um, haven't subscribed and you want to see when a new episode is coming out and you do that now too. Exactly. <laughs> so we got here and things were very difficult for Julia. Mm-hmm. She, you know, had a hard time leaving her friends and all that stuff. And um, We should probably say if this is your first time ever watching our podcast, we have two children. Our son, John, is 14. Our daughter, Julia, is 11. Yeah. Julia's 11. Mm-hmm. And coming to middle school for the first time at a new school yeah, and a new place, grade. it's really hard. It's difficult. So she was having a rough time, and she did a lot of crying and, you know, feeling like she didn't have friends and mm-hmm. everything. So that loneliness was not just me yeah. going through it. it was Julia, too. It was Julia, too. And she had so many friends in Atlanta that made it yeah. much more difficult when she got here. Yeah, I mean, it was like family. I mean, these friends were like family. So, and they are family. Yeah. So to leave them was very difficult. Yes. And to leave family, actual family that we had was very difficult as well. Our grandparents lived there. So leaving all of that was hard Mm -hmm. and coming to a new place. Um, so she cried a lot. Yeah, she did. Uh, she had a lot of rough days mm-hmm. where she didn't want to go to school. I mean, a lot of nights when she would go to bed, she would cry saying she didn't want to go to school the next day and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So it was really tough. And it's hard for a parent to see because we want to fix everything for our yes. kids. Yes, of course. And so not being able to fix that was yes. hard. Yes. And she was asking, can we go back? Can we just move back as if it was that easy? Right. But <laughs> I'm like, it's not that easy. Yeah. You know, we, we can't do that. Yeah. So. You know, we couldn't fix it for her. Yeah. During the move, she had this buzzing sound in her ear. Yeah. And it was like every day she was dealing with it. And she would only really hear it at night when it was time to go to bed when everything was quiet. So now the TV's off, the iPad's off, whatever. There's nobody talking. She's in the silence of her room. It's time for bed. It's time to go to sleep. And she would get up and come to our room and say, I'm hearing some funny noise in my ear. I'm not sure what it is. So, uh, you know, just moving here, we didn't have a doctor. So right. I didn't, you know, I didn't have anybody I could just take her to right then. So right. I just, you know, I waited to find somebody that I felt, you know, was good based on what my friends told me. Yeah. And we took her immediately to the doctor yeah. and he gave her a hearing test. Mm-hmm. It was really a, a bad hearing was machine. It? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, it was, just, it was really a horrible experience. Really? Well, I I remember the experience being horrible. I didn't know the machine was bad. Oh, my goodness. It was old. The guy didn't know how to work it. He was actually hitting it. (laughs) You did tell me that. To get it to work. Like, he couldn't find the plugs for it. The printout thing wouldn't work. Yeah. And he did the test, and he was like, oh, it doesn't print out, but she's fine. She's fine. Right, right, right. So I'm thinking, okay, she probably got some wax in there, and she Mm -hmm. just needs to get the wax out because it's making this noise. Whatever. It's causing a noise. You know, that's what I'm thinking because this doctor's like, oh, she's good Mm -hmm. based on the little things that I heard, even though it didn't print out. Right. (laughs) It was so bad. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I'm like, I wish I had snapped him doing that. Have you ever been back to that guy? (laughs) No. Will you? Will you? Better question. Will you ever go back to that guy? No, I went back to that doctor's office, but it was a different doctor. Okay. And she's good. Just making sure. Anyway. Okay. We just tell Julia, we're not sure what that sound is, but maybe it'll go away. And it seems like everything is fine. She's, she's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, 
fast forward a couple of months. She's still going through this stressful time at school and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And we decide to have a little get together at our house for New Year's. And uh, we had a bunch of kids over and uh, the kids were kind of loud. And one of the kids screamed in Julia's ear. And this was the same ear that she had been hearing that sound in. She came upstairs right after that and said, Mommy, Daddy, I can't hear. We said, what do you mean? So I can't hear in my right ear. And we're like, what are you talking about? Right. So, well, somebody screamed in my ear and I can't hear now. And, you know, you've had this happen before where somebody screams really loud in your ear and mm -hmm. it rings. Right. And it rings so loudly that after a while it just goes back to normal right. and you're fine. So we're like, so just we, give it some time. Yeah, it some time. It'll yeah. be fine. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't, it didn't turn around. It never, it never came back. And she was still complaining about it the next day. So, again, another doctor's trip. And April goes to see another doctor and they give her a test. And this doctor becomes very frantic after the hearing test. Yeah, so he comes in the room after the hearing test and he says to me, uh, ma'am, I, I don't understand this. I don't understand this test. I don't understand. I'm, I'm like, okay, this is not good that the doctor's coming in frantic like this. Right. So he's like, she can't hear. And I'm like, what? Right. What do you mean? He was like, she only has 8% of her hearing. Wow. She cannot hear. Wow. And so I am like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Right. I mean, because when a kid says, I can't hear, you're not really thinking that they can't hear all the way. You don't think of their death. Not 8%. Yeah. You know, you're not thinking that. Right. So I'm like, what? So, I mean, again, I break down. Yeah. I break down in, in tears because I don't know what to do. <laughs> right. I'm out where the receptionist is and Julia's standing. Well, they had her in the back room. I'm crying. I can't even help it. Tears mm -hmm. are coming down because the doctor's saying to me, you need to get her to a specialist. Yeah. Like now, right. like you need to get, and he was a specialist, but he was, already he, was, a specialist. he was like, you need to go to a real specialist. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, almost yeah, like, he's yeah, like, yeah. I'm not the one. Right, you need to go right. to somebody who knows more about right. this than I do. Right. He was like, you need to go to a specialist call. Right. It was like the whole doctor's office stopped. Yeah. Everyone was on the phone trying to get us into yeah, yeah, a yeah. specialist right. that day. Like immediately. Like yeah. right then. Yeah. And that freaked me out because I, I was like, this has to be as serious as it is right. because, because of the these way guys that are going they, bananas. Yeah. yeah. And they were comforting me, yeah, had yeah, their yeah. arms around me. Yeah. Oh, ma'am, you're going to be okay. We're yeah, so yeah, sorry. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh my goodness. And think about it. One minute your daughter can hear, the next minute they're telling you 8% of hearing. Right. That's pretty bad. So we, we find a specialist finally. Uh, one of my friends has some kind of a connection and we, we got her to a, a really good specialist. And they give her another hearing test. And this time it's much more thorough. Uh, they have this special uh, booth. And uh, she sits inside the booth. I'm in there with her. And uh, there's some glass. And the people who are administering the test are on the other side of it. And they're doing a bunch of extensive tests. Uh, much more than just the normal test that you have with the headphones. And uh, if, it, if you hear a beep on your right, raise mm -hmm. your right hand. If you're you know, on the left, raise your left hand. You know, mm -hmm. much more extensive than that. And the test probably took... 25, 30 minutes, uh, several different things that they went through. And at the end of it, um, I, I had to take her to this doctor while April was working. So April was not physically there at the time. Right. One of the things that was kind of alarming and a little bit jarring, there was one part of the test that they did where um, they would say a word and ask Julia to repeat the word that she heard. And uh, because they were testing the right ear, they had to turn it up. And so they turned it up really loud, and it was so loud that I could hear the words. Mm -hmm. And I remember them saying a word like, you know, cat. And Julia would say something totally off. It'll be one syllable still, but like, you know, um, dark or something like that. Oh, and man, that, that was. That. And then they would say, you know, oh, my um, goodness. puppy. And she would say, you know, um, darling, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it, it was, guys, it, man, if, if you want to feel like absolute just helplessness, just, the, you know, the, the, I think the most primal um, instinct that a parent has is that of protection. Yes. You want to be able to protect your children from things. You, you want to keep them from going through stuff. Right. And at that moment, there was literally nothing I could do. I mean, I, I felt me it, 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 it was it was really that. tough. Yeah. So anyway, uh, when they're done with all the mm. tests, uh, we go back in the room and they come in and basically what they say is Julia is effectively deaf in her right ear. 
and they had they called it something they called it sudden neurosensory hearing loss that's what they called it mm -hmm. and what they said was it's an unexplained phenomenon that sometimes happens where out of nowhere for some reason your ear just, your ear just doesn't work you just can't hear they they looked at her ear they they went in with some kind of a you know thing to scope whatever i don't know what you call these things mm -hmm. i should know this but they said there was no actual damage to the eardrum. They couldn't see any physical, you know, uh, their nerves were not severed. You know, there, there was nothing wrong. She had an x-ray, all that. She had an MRI, do, MRI. All of that, yeah. There, there was nothing actually her wrong with her ear. Great, That's everything. right. Everything yeah. was fine. Just for some reason, her hearing is not working. They don't know why. So they said, we'll put her on some steroids for a week. 10 days, something mm -hmm. like that. And then we'll bring her back in and give her another test. Now, remember that 8% number. 8% was the amount of hearing that she had. And then it went to uh, one week or, or 10 days or whatever of this steroid. We came back in. They gave her another test. And this time, she did much better. Mm -hmm. uh, it was up to 32%, mm -hmm. which made us feel great. Yeah. But what they said was, she definitely needs a hearing aid. So that was hard to hear because you just, you know, you just feel think that your children are going to be healthy. I mean, you, you they're know. They're born healthy, you think they're going to stay healthy the rest of their gonna lives. You think they're going to stay You're not yeah. thinking something like the hearing is just going to go away right. unexplained. Yes. You know, right. so, I mean, that was crushing. Yeah, it, it was. It was crushing. We actually had a time in our home, again. Yes. Where it was silent. Yeah. You know, even We were my, all mourning, even we John mourning. John. My you know? son, I mean, he yeah. came to me every day. It's our hearing back. It's our hearing yeah. back. Yeah. I mean, we were crying. We yeah. were we were praying. We, we prayed were just so hard. So hard oh, asking for our hearing to come back. And I mean, yeah. when I say quiet around here. Yeah. You know. Just and, somber. <laughs> actually, Julia was the only one who was like, do, 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 do. Yeah. Like, yeah. She was acting almost unaffected. <laughs> it was it. like, yeah. I'm going on. Right. And that encouraged us. Yes. Because it really, she seemed like she, she just said, I'm going to go on yes. and I'm going to be good. At yeah. school, I watched her. And she told her friends, hey, I can't hear on this side. Move over to the other side. Yeah. You know? So all her friends were sitting on her left side now at lunch instead right. of on her right. You know? So, I mean, she worked through that. But, yeah. you know, it was just hard because as parents, we want to protect our children. Yes. We want to make sure that they have all of the things they need to be healthy, yes. to be able to, you know, have a, a normal life. Yes. So yes. to see that she had to make some adjustments, yeah. that was so difficult. And now we're feeling so helpless as parents. We're borderline depressed, walking around moping We really and stuff. were. We it mourned. Was a lot. Yeah. We yeah. mourned for a good, I think it was a good two weeks. Yeah, I think so before too. Before we were able to come out of that. Yes. Um, but the good news about the hearing getting better was helpful. The fact that it went up to 32%, that was nice. But what the doctor said was that wasn't enough of a percentage jump for them to feel like the steroids were actually working. And she was going to have to wear two hearing aids. A special kind of hearing aid where um, because she couldn't hear on her right ear, the hearing aid on the right side would actually just be a microphone. And then the hearing aid on the left would be the, the Bluetooth earpiece, basically, that would go into her ear, kind of. And the way it works is, if something is said on her right side, it would transmit to the left side so that she could hear it in her good ear. That wasn't really a good solution to me, because she still wouldn't be able to use the right ear. I didn't yeah, love that. I know. And, so and was, that was, was so hard. Great. And then her having to wear two. Yes. You know, just getting used to all of that. And yeah. I know there are so many people that have way children with issues that they oh, have yeah. to have so many different things. Yes. So, yes. I mean, it, but it's hard when it's your child. That's right. Yeah. And this is the circumstance we were in. That's right. So yeah. it was very difficult. So it was tough. And, um, so the day that we yeah. went for the fitting was a really good day. We we ordered the hearing aid, the the special one. It's called a cross hearing aid. Um, and then on the day of the fitting, the doctor did something. She said that in a normal situation, a child has to have at least 40% hearing in order for her to try out a traditional hearing aid. But she said she was going to try it anyway because she said 32% is kind of close to it. But it's probably not going to work, but we'll try it anyway. So she started with a traditional hearing aid in Julia's right ear. And she, she told Julia, I'm just going to do this for the fit. Let's see if it fits well. So she puts it in. She gets it to fit right. She turns it on. And she says to Julia, how does that fit? How does that feel? Julia says, it feels great. She says, I can hear you great. And I said, what would you say? <laughs> she said, I can hear you. I said, what do you mean you can hear? She said, I can hear. I said, no way. Come here. So I made her come over to me. I mean, come over here again. Yeah, stand up and everything. Like, come down towards me. 
I mean, it looks good. And with your hair, I can't even see the thing at all. That's really good. Are you taking so, a video of it? Yeah, I'm just yeah. snapping or something. So let me whisper to you again so Mommy can see me do that. She's not going to believe me. What's your name? Julia. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I whispered in her right ear something short. I don't know. What is today? I don't know. I, I said, how old are you? I think it was. I whispered that. And she said, 11. I said, okay, wait, wait, now cover, cover your left ear. You probably just heard it out of that ear. There's no way. I said, what is your name? She said, Julia. I said, whoa, guys, oh, I'm not going to lie to yes. you. To, okay, now, that's not her actual hearing coming all the way back, but mm -hmm. I felt like a miracle happened in that moment. Right. Because we went in that day expecting that she would not be able to wear a traditional hearing aid. Right. And we left that day knowing that a traditional hearing aid would actually work, that her hearing yes. was good enough that she could wear one. She got her favorite color. It was very small, went right behind the ear. You could barely see it. Mm -hmm. The little piece that goes into the ear was clear. So... She left that day so excited, so happy. Yes. And, of course, we were, too. It was wonderful. Yeah. Everything changed. The whole yeah. mood and the whole oh, family. Man. We <laughs> were so happy. She came to school. Hey, look, look, look. Yeah, showing, showing everybody. Friends, you know, you know I got it. Everybody <laughs> was like, yeah, you got it. I mean, yeah. it, was, it wasn't nobody was picking on her. Remember, remember really what you told experience. me happened at lunch for the first time with the girls, her friends? Once she got the hearing aid, they didn't sit on her left side anymore. Right. At lunch, they were all sitting around. She was talking to them. It was no problem. And She was just sitting made, in the middle of them instead sitting of sitting. in the middle. Yeah. It just, oh, man, it lifted such a burden. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it was great. And I mean, with the technology today, you can, you know, it, it really is a miracle, yeah. you know, that yeah. those things can help. Yes. And what's great, too, is that um, she had a teacher who had the same exact hearing aid as same she hearing aid different you color know, <laughs> different color but you know yeah. when she found out that that teacher had the exact yes. same hearing aid and went yes. through the exact same thing yes. and that and she's she living had, a good life right now she actually even had though the she has same a hearing aid sudden hearing loss wow i so, didn't know that so yeah wow so you know they she was able to relate to her yes. and again i'm saying it again for an, uh, the third time yes. and that is when you go through something and you tell your story, Yes. other people say, man, I had the same problem or yes. I went through the same thing. Yes. Let me encourage you. Yes. And that was an encouragement to Julia. Yes. And it made her feel so good. And she would go to her teacher and say, hey, look, this is, you know, this is how mine looks. And yeah. they talked about it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I just feel like that's just so powerful it to is. share your story. It is. And I'm hoping that's what's happening with this. I'm hoping that as we're opening up and sharing our story about how we handled trauma, how trauma affected our relationship, how it affected our home life, how we tried to make it bring us closer together, how it sometimes actually tried to separate us, how yeah. it made things more difficult. Right. We're hoping that it's an encouragement to you as well. Yes. So we're hoping that same thing today. And I think that praying together, that really is powerful Absolutely. because that's what we had to do. We did. Um, as you know, a family. We were, as a family. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we decided, you know what, we're going to have extra prayers. That's right. And we're yeah. going to surround Julia. We're going right. to touch her. Yes. We're going to hug her. Yes. And that's what we did to get through it. You know, it made and, a difference. It made know, all and, the difference in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that brought us together as a family as well. Sometimes these did. traumas can actually bring you closer together as a family. Right. Try to use those opportunities because you don't know how long you're going to have each other on this earth. You have no idea. Life is really short. Yes. Make the best out of these situations. And she did give us permission to share her story. So. She did. She actually <laughs> did. So don't worry. We're not violating her or anything like right. that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now it's time for our word of the day. April, what is our word today? Our word of the day is powerless. Wow. Powerless. Yeah. Man. Powerless means devoid of strength or resources, mm. lacking the authority or capacity to act. Wow, powerless. This is how we felt during the time that we went through with Julia. Yeah. Having her hearing loss felt completely powerless. You know, when your kid comes in with a little scratch on their knee from falling off their bike, you know what to do. You can put some peroxide on it. Mm -hmm. You can put some ointment on there, put a Band-Aid. You just made well, your kids Well, they say like, don't put peroxide on anymore. Sorry. Well, <laughs> maybe you don't put peroxide. <laughs> they say <laughs> do nothing. Okay. Well, just clean it yeah, off and put it, the Band-Aid yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Just put a Band-Aid on. <laughs> Whatever the case is, you know how to do that, what to yeah. act. You may not have been able to keep that from happening, but at least you feel like you were part of the process to make it better. Right. But when you're in a situation like we were in, where you're not a doctor, where even the doctors don't know how to explain something, yeah. you feel completely powerless. You do. That's the time that you go to your higher power. Exactly. So that's what we did. Yeah. We took that opportunity to pray and we said, we need somebody who knows this thing better than we do exactly. to come in and fix it for us. Yeah. And that's what we yeah. say you should do too. If you're in a powerless situation, 
don't turn on each other in the relationship. Don't blame each other. Because that's what happens a lot of times. When you can't act in a situation like that, oftentimes you start taking things out on each other. Mm-hmm. And that's a bad position to be in. You don't want to do that. No. Turn to a higher power that yes. can actually fix that thing for you. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So don't feel powerless anymore. No. We hope the best for you in your situation. Yes. Thanks for watching Just John and April. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also hit that notification bell to be notified about our next episode. See you next time. Bye.